Pineal gland activation. Man opens third eye with a magnet, written by Greg Prescott, MS, founder and skipper of In5D.com, the hottest esoteric, metaphysical, and spiritual news on the net, narrated by Rockin' Larry Lockin. Have you ever heard the expression, be careful of what you wish for because you just might get it? Many people are trying to find ways to fully open their pineal glands, but one person in particular may have gotten more than he desired. By using the north end of a magnet, a man allegedly opened his pineal gland, third eye, to not only see things within this dimension, but beyond it as well. Walter Rawls' pineal simulator experiment. The following, the following is an excerpt from a free book by David Wilcott called The Science of Oneness. Walter Rawls, who worked with the effects of monopolar magnetic fields on matter, with the late Albert Roy Davis told me in a telephone conversation of his experiments with the North Pole magnet situated over his pineal gland. A mask was made which held the North Pole end of a long cylindrical magnet over the pineal gland. The purpose was to simulate the gland and see if there was anything to this third eye business. Exposure was in the range of 10 to 30 minutes per day over a period of about four weeks. Within the first week, he was sitting at the desk reading documents when he noticed something move out of the corner of his eye. As he looked up, the ghostly figure of a man had walked through one wall, moved across the room, and disappeared through another wall. The figure was totally unaware of Walter. Further exposures to this North Pole field took place over a second and third week. The second week, the same ghostly figure moved through the room and glanced toward Walter as he passed through. This time the figure appeared to have slightly more detail, not quite so ghostly. The third week, while busy working on documents, Walter noticed a change in the room. When he looked up, the wall had dissolved away and he was looking at a small hill where a man and a woman sat beneath a tree. It was the same ghostly male figure who he had seen on the other occasions. He sat quiet, he sat quite still, watching his pastoral scene for several minutes. The man looked over toward Walter and appeared startled. It was as if he saw clearly Walter this time and possibly recognized Walter as the ghost that he had seen the previous week. The image faded away and the wall restored to its normal condition. From that moment on, Walter never used the pineal simulator again. Rawls co-wrote a book on magnetism entitled The Magnetic Blueprint of Life by Albert Roy Davis and Walter J.R. Rawls. Wilcock also went on to add, Interestingly, the work of Charles Fort mentioned that many spiritualist studies were done at the turn of the 20th century by organizations such as the American Society of Physical Research, which directly correlated higher frequencies of ghost sightings and paranormal activity with higher energetic emissions from the sun. In this case, the sun appears to be lending the extra energy of consciousness that allows otherwise normal human beings to see into other realms and or causing a blending effect between realities. And as we shall see in a minute, there appear to be some people who can see these realms and perform psychic feats in them without any such outside energetic simulation. In 2007, we acquired some breakthrough new information on the pineal gland that will appear in later volumes of this series. For one thing, the interior of the gland actually has a very similar tissue makeup as the retina of the eye, hence the notion of it being a third eye may be far more interesting than most people give credit for. It may well be that the pineal gland is the most important hyperdimensional interface gland that we have. It appears that the gland operates on a very simple process namely a barrel-shaped volume of water when totally shielded from electromagnetic energy sound and other shocks from our own space-time will form a gateway into one time space into time space this metaphysical realm that the various experiments were discussing tap into the interior of the gland is filled with water more blood flows through the pineal gland than any part of the brain that is a documented fact. The witness testimony also suggests that we naturally have an electromagnetic shield surrounding the water inside the gland. And it appears that the integrity of this shield is very, very important. Uses of drugs like LSD 
can temporarily distort and deactivate the shield, creating interdimensional consciousness effects that can be dangerous. Supposedly, the use of such drugs creates cracks in the protective shield that never really go away. And if a person gets too open too quickly, there can be disastrous effects on their sanity. So in the above case, it seems that a strictly electromagnetic process can temporarily disrupt the pineal gland's shield in the same manner. We do not recommend you try this at home. Pineal gland magnets. One must ponder the effects on the pineal gland if there was a magnetic pole reversal. Additionally, how would the hemispheres in our brains be affected by the change in magnetism? In, other article in another article entitled Pineal Gland Mystique, regarding magnets in the pineal gland, it is stated, attaching a magnet that sticks by adhesive to the part of your skin above your third eye, located between your two physical eyes, but slightly higher or slightly above the eyes for a few hours throughout the day, will also stimulate the pineal gland and can help dec decalcify it. Magnets cause the body to become alkaline especially that part of the body where the magnet is attached. Any strength gauze magnet will work, but not only use magnets on the head area during working hours, the energy from Ra, the sun, will magnify the strength of the magnet's effects on the pineal gland. The magnetic field in the pineal gland. In a study on the Earth's magnetic field's effects on the pineal gland, it was determined that geomagneticism appears to be one of the environmental conditions which seem to enhance the pineal gland. Just recently, there has been considerable interest in the effect of the Earth's magnetic field, EMF, on living orgasms, particularly as a direction finder. This interest seems to be spreading into much more esoteric fields, parapsychology being one of them. There are suggestions that the PSI ability is related to changes in magnetic field strength. There is suggestions that the, P, that the ability is linked with the pineal gland, that the PSI is linked with the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is affected by geomagnetic variations, as shall be detailed in this article. There are suggestions that dowsing ability is related to the EMF. There are suggestions that the UFO phenomena are linked with areas of geomagnetic anomaly and a UFO phenomena seem to have a PSI component. Putting all these individual pieces together, an intriguing picture emerges, which suggests that the old idea of a sixth sense may not just be that, a sensitivity to the EMF. However, the sensitivity is a subliminal perception. And so the psychology process by which we become aware of this information is in many ways similar to that by which we become aware of the PSI inputs. From a physical, from a practical subjective level, therefore, awareness of the EMF and awareness of the PSI information will manifest in very similar ways. Thus, map dowsing, awareness of PSI impressions, and field dowsing, awareness of electromagnetic impressions, manifest in similar ways the dowser obtaining information from the swing of the pendulum or from rods, these being a sort of biofeedback tool, if you will, informing the consciousness mind of subliminal responses. This suggests, as with my research into more traditional subliminal perceptions, that the line between sense and perceptions and the PSI perceptions is a very fuzzy one, the one merging imperceptibility into the other. In other words, consciousness can be altered when the pineal gland is simulated through changes in either the electromagnetic or geomagnetic fields. The Schumann resonance. The Schumann resonance in the pineal gland. The Schumann resonance is the frequency of electromagnetic field on Earth. Changes in the Earth's magnetic field affect the production of melatonin and serotonin in the pineal gland, as well as the brainstem acetylene levels. Is it possible that changes in the Schumann resonance will affect the changes in the pineal gland? 
The bottom line, the lesson we can learn from these experiments is to find an energetic balance with the earth and sun because the more we become detached from nature, the more out of balance our bodies become and our pineal gland to work optimally. Both inner and outer balance must be achieved. Article again by Greg Prescott, web maestro editor and founder of N5D.com and on behalf of the entire staff at N5D.com and its other supporting entities, we wish you a namaste and a great afternoon.